in the last several classes we studied jitter generation in a clock and data recovery circuit. Uh, first of all uh, with a linear phase detector jitter generation mainly comes from the noisy elements in the circuit that is the charge pump current uh, resistor in the loop filter and of course, the VCO itself. Now, we have an idea of what the phase noise of the VCO looks like and from each of these we can calculate the output phase noise spectrum and from that calculate the jitter by integrating it from 0 to infinity. Okay. Now, we will uh, uh, go to uh, bang bang phase detectors and there is a special type of jitter generation there because of the inherent bang bang nature of the circuit. So, we will look at that. Okay. So, this is a bang bang phase detector you are familiar with this. Okay. Now, in this case uh, what happens is that you imagine that the input is as usual just alternating data and the clock is aligned with the data that is the rising edge of the clock is in the middle of the data. Okay. Then uh, what happens is basically uh, in case of the linear phase detector the data is like this let us say the clock is uh, aligned. In case of a linear phase detector, the phase detector output or the charge pump output current will be like this. At each transition, there will be a pulse like that whose average is 0. Okay. Will be zero, and of course here we don't have a transition, so it'll be like that, and so on. Okay. Whereas if you consider uh, consider the output of the bang bang phase detector, now the bang bang phase detector gives you a full uh, cycle output, either positive or negative, for every transition. Okay, it doesn't matter how much the phase misalignment is; it always gives you something. Okay, so. Let me imagine that for in the first one the clock is marginally lagging the very slightly lagging the uh, correct position. So, this gives you an up, up pulse here may be the next time it gives you a down it will be like that may be the next time it gives you an up then after that there is no transition and so on. Okay. So, this one you can see you will have a positive output here although it is very close to being aligned the output is not 0. Similarly, here you have a negative 1 and so on the long term average will be 0, but it will be banging around the correct uh, position. Okay. I mean sorry the bang bang phase detector output will always give you a 1 or 0. So, this now this this I C P. So, this is a bang bang P D output. So, for each transition it gives you either a full positive or a full negative output. Okay. The long term average will be 0 because the clock is aligned to data, but for each clock it gives you this. So, what it does is
Okay. Now this you can see that is the charge from current. Okay. It is the output or up minus down which is also the charge from current. The charge from current is basically either plus I C P or minus I C P here also it is I C P and minus I C P. Now, this uh, current this pulsed current goes into the loop filter and it modulates the control voltage of the V C O right. And so, this process itself creates a jitter okay, because the V C V control is being pulsed right because of the bang bang nature of the output and that creates some jitter is this okay. So, we have to find out how much that is, but this is an additional jitter generation in a bang bang uh, phase detector. So, let us assume that we have a noiseless charge pump uh, current and noiseless resistor and a noiseless V C O even then simply the bang bang nature of the control. I mean this is true of any bang bang uh, nature. I think earlier I gave you examples where these uh, geysers and some heaters and so on they either just switch on or switch off. So, if you look at the temperature it would not be equal to the target it will go slightly above slightly below it will keep changing. Okay. So, that is what happens here also. So, what we have to see is the amount of phase change in the output clock because of this essentially jitter is nothing but phi out right that is what we want to find out because of this one. Okay. Is the problem clear? So, now I will make uh, some simplification so that it is easier to analyze after that we will justify that. <coughs> Remember when we started off with uh, this clock and data uh, rec recovery circuits, we initially had a picture with only the resistor and no capacitor. Okay. Now, we saw that that works only somehow if the uh, free running frequency of the VCO magically equals the input data rate that is the only condition under which it works. Okay. So, now we will assume that condition. Okay. In fact, the role of the capacitor is to add an offset to the control voltage of the VCO to change its free running frequency. So, now instead of analyzing the whole thing I will assume that there is only the resistor okay. and I will say that the free running frequency equals the data rate. Okay. Let us assume this and uh, do the calculations because it just becomes easier. Okay. Is this fine? Now, it is clear that uh, if you send in let us say rectangular uh, I mean alternating data right you will have uh, some pluses and some minuses which in the long term will average to 0. Now, we have to find out the pattern that actually comes out here of the up and down signals. Let us say this is D and clock I will show it as being aligned, but of course, at every edge I mean it has to give you either positive or negative output. Okay. okay. This is the clock. Now, what will be the charge pump output or what will be the up minus down signal? What is this going to be? Huh? Huh? No, no, that uh, that cannot happen. Okay this is a binary detector right it is going to make a decision. So, it will either give you up or down. So, what will it be? What do you guess the output will be? So, you are saying it will be alternating also right. So, that we have to check. So, let us look at what actually happens the bang bang phase detector 
takes three samples one is this A sample, the next one is the following bit B and then the transition sample. Again I show it as aligned, but it will be either slightly before or after okay. and we also know that the structure of the bang bang phase detector is uh, I think we have drawn it long back. So, let me go there perhaps. It is like this, right? So, we have two flip flops clocking the data, okay, and then we have the transition sampler with the opposite phase, but we realign it to the rising edge using this flip flop, okay. So, what happens here? We will have essentially. The upper down signals will be like this. I will uh, tell you in a moment what it means. So, we delay a sample by one cycle, right, with the extra flip flop. So, a will uh, let me draw them individually. The a sample output will be like this, okay. For this particular a, it will actually come out here and the next cycle. So, this is a and then B of course, it is sampled and then there is no further delay. So, this is B and finally, this T is also aligned to this. Okay. So, the up or down signal is also aligned to this particular case. right? This is basically uh, up minus down this can be either positive or negative, but the point I am trying to make is what is it that we are measuring? We are measuring the timing of actually what the bang bang phase detector does is to measure the timing of the falling edge and compare it to the timing of the data transition right. We try we say that we want the rising edge in the middle of this, but that is not actually what happens in the uh, Alexander or the bang bang phase detector what happens is the falling edge will be aligned to the transition and if you do have a 50 percent duty cycle clock the rising edge will be uh, aligned to the middle of the data symbol. Okay. Because if you can imagine if the rising edge is slightly skewed like this nothing changes okay. only if the falling edge is skewed will you uh, see a change. So, the, the bang bang phase detector actually measures the timing of the uh, falling edge of the clock with respect to the data transition. Now, so this is where we have the transition and the <coughs> information about that comes here after some delay okay. after in this particular case it is a half cycle delay right. That is if you look at the start of the up minus down pulse it is half cycle delayed compared to when the transition actually occurs. Okay. So, there is some delay in the measurement is this okay. So, now from this we have to figure out uh, what the actual pattern will be of the uh, of the phase in a bang bang detector where everything is noiseless it is just the pure bang bang operation. Okay. Now, for simplicity and anyway this is going to be reality <coughs> I will assume that there is some extra delay meaning what I mean is that first we sample the A sample at this edge. Okay. The output and similarly B sample at this edge ideally the output starts from this edge. In reality this will also be slightly delayed from there. Okay. So, the start of the up minus down pulse is delayed by slightly more than half cycle is this. Okay? this is what is going to happen in reality because if you have flip flops 
the output is not going to start exactly at the rising edge of the flip flop, it will be a little bit after that. Okay. So, now based on this can we figure out uh, what happens that is will we actually get alternate ups and downs or will we get something else. How do you figure it out? Spikes in the where? No, no, this is I mean let us assume that the rise time fall time is all negligible compared to uh, the period. Why? There is no other randomness here, right? First, let us assume that I think it is reasonable to assume that the up and down signal or up minus down, it will itself be periodic. Okay. That is, uh, when it is up, it will start advancing the VCO phase and then when it is down, it will start retarding the VCO phase and this happens periodically because we do not have any other sources of noise here to randomize anything. Okay. Now, the question is what will be the period of that? Earlier, he suggested that it will be alternately up and down. So, the period will be two data symbols, right. So, it will be up minus down will be plus 1 for one data symbol, minus 1 during the next data symbol, plus 1, minus 1 and so on. So, the period will be two data symbols. My question is, is that correct? How will you find out whether the period is 2 or not? Is the question clear? What is that? Yeah, but is that true? That is what I am asking. Is that what we will get? <coughs> so, if you look at the control voltage, okay. What is that? Okay. Okay. I did not understand that. I mean, so, V control could it be like this? That is the question. I mean, I am showing these uh, edges slightly delayed from the rising edges of the clock. V control in this case, V control is just uh, this I C P times R, right? I have assumed that the pre running frequency is the correct one. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, that is exactly what we have to figure out is that what happens? Let us assume first that alternately we get up and down signals, right. So, that means that the output uh, current of the charge pump will be uh, plus I C P minus I C P plus I C P minus I C P in consecutive data periods. Similarly, this V control will be plus I C P R minus I C P R and so on. Okay. right and there is a small delay between the rising edge of this clock and the actual transition of V control. Okay. Now, what will be the phase of the V C O in response to such a V control? What will be the phase of the VCO? Huh? Integrated. So, what will it look like? I mean, the control voltage is this plus minus I C P R. So, what will be the phase of the VCO? It will be a triangular wave, right? It will be a triangular wave. It is it is ramping up in this period when the control voltage is positive and it is ramping down 
in this period when the control voltage is negative and so on. Okay. This is 5 ECO and what will be the peak to peak value of this? All of you are convinced that it will be a triangular wave, the phase because essentially when it is plus I C P R, it is oscillating at a slightly higher frequency than the desired frequency. Okay. So, the phase compared to the data which is at the F naught will be slightly getting advanced and then here it is oscillating at a slightly lower frequency. So, it is getting retarded. So, what is the peak to peak phase variation? Yeah. So, basically this 2 pi k v c o times the control voltage I C P R times this T s basically the data symbol interval. Okay. Is this fine? Now, I have drawn this 5 ECO and I have drawn this line in the middle of it. Basically, I assume that this black line is the average position of the clock and the phase is varying above and below that, obviously, right. The average for one is in the middle. Is this clear? So, now does this result make sense? Do these waveforms make sense at all? First of all, in response to this edge, let me call this 1, edge number 1, we got this. So, at edge number 1, was the clock leading or lagging the data? It was lagging, that is why you got an up signal, that is why you got plus I C P R. Okay. So, it was lagging and then uh, it started leading. Okay, and and at edge number two, what is happening? Is it lagging or leading? Is it leading? See, actually, this edge here. Maybe let me exaggerate the delay a little bit. That will make it clearer. So I'll uh, show it with uh, slightly greater delay than what I had drawn earlier. and this also ok. So, at edge number 2 if you look at it in response to edge number 1 you get a plus I C P R at that point this voltage starts ramping up ok. But uh, I mean, this happens with a delay. So, if you look at this edge number 2, is the VCO lagging or leading? It is still lagging, right? Because the VCO phase is still negative compared to the average position, is not it? Okay. So, if the delay was exactly half, then this, uh, this would have coincided with the 0 crossing of this. Okay, but I think it is reasonable to assume that the delay will be a little more than that. So, it is still lagging. Okay. So, what that means is the next output will not be like that. Okay. It will also be up. right? So, we initially assume that we will get alternating up and down signals. What this is showing is that cannot be the case. Is this convincing? Because, because of the delay, right? you measure the phase here and the response to that you start changing the phase in response to that at this point. Okay. So, because, because of that by the time the next edge comes you will not have applied enough correction to make it a leading phase. Okay. If you did that then you the next one will be negative. So, we have not done that. So, what do you think the output will be? It should be Oh, it's clearly it cannot be up for only one clock period. So, we have to try 
like one more clock period and then see what happens ok. And uh, this part is a assumption I did not prove it, but we will assume that the output will be periodic. So, instead of now getting uh, one up and one down we will have to assume two ups and two downs. I mean there is nothing it is symmetric with respect to up and down right you cannot I mean there is no asymmetry whether uh, it is leaking or lad, leading or lagging the same thing will happen in both cases. So, now let us see if that becomes consistent. So, that is we have two ups, two downs and so on. So, in that case what will happen? We will have we will have 5 ECO ramping up in this period and ramping down in that period then again ramping up and so on. This time the peak to peak value will be twice as much because you have two continuous ups. Okay. So, now is this consistent? So, again we are measuring. So, at edge number 1 clearly it is lagging right that is why we have the up signal here and it starts applying the correction. At edge number 2 it is still lagging ok. So, you get another up pulse ok and edge number 3 what happens? It is leading right. So, by the way the this is what produces this output starting from there right this edge number 2 is what produces the output starting from there. Edge number 3 now it is leading. So, it is producing a down signal ok and edge number 4 it is still leading right. So, it produces another down signal ok and at edge number 4 it is still uh, leading and at edge number 5 sorry did I draw this correctly? I think this is not drawn to scale. So, you can see that like one period away from this it will be just slightly uh, lagging and so on ok. So, in this case this is consistent ok. So, basically you can see this is what happens you will have uh, first we will assume a periodic uh, pattern for the up and up minus down signal. So, it will be plus for a certain number of periods and minus for the same number of periods ok. And for how many cycles will it be up and down that is what you have to figure out and that depends on the delay ok. In the absolute ideal case with no excess delay at all it may be possible to have one up and one down and one up and one down and so on. But in reality what happens is because you have at least a small amount of delay you can see that because of the delay when you start correcting for this edge number 1 by the time edge number 2 comes you would not have fully corrected that ok. I will assume that this average position of the VCO is in the middle that is by definition right. So, we will get at least 2 up followed by 2 down and so on is this ok. Does this depend on? No, if we so, the average position is here right. So, ICPR increasing ICPR will only do this right. It does not change 
whether it is leading or lagging what it changes is how much it is leading and lagging by okay so it will surely increase the jitter but it will not change whether it is leading or lagging i mean assuming everything else is ideal okay because our bang bang detector only measures whether it's leading or lagging it doesn't make any difference at this analysis okay <coughs> any questions here by the way and this phenomenon this is known as bang bang jitter right this happens because essentially you are not measuring the amount of phase you are only figuring out whether it is leading or lagging and then you will have this jitter and also this is sort of the best case where we have only a small amount of excess delay that appears in practice now what do you think happens if there is a further delay for whatever reason in the loop So, ideally edge number 1 should produce an up or down pulse starting from this point okay. for whatever reason it starts a pulse the pulse starting shifts to this this part what do you think will happen that is it is delayed by more than one half cycle. Huh? Yeah, that's what you would expect. You will get three ups and three downs and so on. Okay, so what happens is that you will have always a triangular wave, right? Because the control voltage is a square wave, the phase will be a triangular wave. Okay, now <coughs> the measurement of phase number one is producing a pulse here. Okay. and the measurement of uh, phase I mean measurement of edge number 2 ok. In fact, we have not even corrected in this case we have not even started correcting by the time edge 2 comes the correction from the edge 1 has not even started ok. So, edge 2 it is still lagging. So, it will produce another up pulse starting from here ok. So, I mean it is a little bit difficult to draw these things to scale and this is edge number 3 at least the way I figure it out is by trying out different periods and then figuring out whether it is consistent. Once you do this it is kind of obvious uh, in that if the excess delay see ideally it should come here the pulse should start at this point ok. This is what I would call excess delay that is the time lag between the actual start of the pulse I mean time lag between the ideal start of the pulse and the actual start of the pulse ok. So, as far as I can figure out if the excess delay is between 0 and half cycle the period will be 4 times T s that is you get 2 ups 2 downs and so on ok. If it is between half and uh, 1 cycle it will be 6 T s 3 ups 3 downs and so on ok. So, basically from that you can figure out the periods. So, it is also important not to have delay in this loop ok and this is again kind of obvious if you go back to the uh, analogy of the heater and so on. So, let us say there is some delay in temperature sensing I mean the water has to become let us say you set it to whatever 60 degree C and it has to be at 60 degree C for a while before the sensor actually tells you that it is 60 degree C. The longer the delay the more will be the overshoot right that makes sense because for that uh, delay period you are still uh, applying the wrong input ok. So, the heater is on so that means it is continuously increase the temperature of the increasing the temperature of the water whereas, because you have not sensed that it has started uh, decreasing. So, delay I think causing instability in a negative feedback loop that is well known. In this case this is a bang bang loop. So, in a sense this is always unstable that is you can see that even in the ideal case right you will have a periodic output you do not have a steady state 0 output ok. And also as the delay increases the peak to peak jitter will go on increasing ok. 
So, what is the peak to peak jitter? It is basically, so let us see when we have a bang bang C D R. up minus down and then I will also assume alternating input. If you have random data things can get a little more complicated, but at least this is good enough to analyze what happens. and we know that n will be at least 2 right. So, and n increases as delay increases ok and what is the peak to peak uh, phase jitter. What is the peak to peak phase jitter that we get? It is basically 2 pi k v c o, it is times i c p r, this is the change in frequency times the number of uh, cycles for which it is high. Okay. This is fine. So, uh, this is something peculiar to the bang bang uh, phase detector, this does not happen in the linear phase detector. Okay. Now, this is actually even more important, because uh, later we will see this bang bang uh, phase detector is basically a digital phase detector, okay. it is based on the binary information you make the decision. Now, sometimes to make the implementation easier, you deserialize the data. Okay. So, you can, uh, I will, I have not talked explicitly about deserialization circuits, but let us say you have one stream at 10 gigabits per second, you can divide it into two streams at 5 gigabits per second, four streams at uh, uh, 2.5 gigabits per second and so on. Okay. Now, even without going into uh, the circuit, we can see that. So, let us say the input is like this. So, let us say this is d 0, d 1, d 2, d 3, d 4, d 5, d 6. Okay. Now, let us not worry about the implementation of the d serializer, but we know that it will involve sampling d 0 and d 1 okay, and then putting them in parallel in two parallel streams. Okay. So, if you want to put d 0 and d 1 on top of each other, on top of each other meaning they should occur. So, this will be d 0. So, this is the input stream, the single stream. If you want to divide it into two streams, you will have alternating bits in the two streams. So, this will be d 0 and this will be d 1 right? and the next one will be d 2 and d 4. Okay. And similarly, you can do by 4 x in which case essentially you will have d 0 starting from here, d 1 starting from here sorry d 2 d 3. Uh, what happens when you deserialize? there is a delay there has to be right, because you are putting d 0 and d 1 in the same time slot. So, you have to wait until the sampling of d 1 to get d 0 also. So, there is this much delay. Okay. Similarly, when you uh, put four of them on top of each other you divide it into four streams, you can easily sense that it has to be at least delayed by that much right, because you want to put d 0 d 1 d 2 and d 3 in the same time slot, you have to wait until the sampling of d 3 to put d 0 also. So, the delay only increases as you increase the number of uh, uh, yeah, I mean as you deserialize by larger and larger factors, is this ok. So, now 
to make the implementation of the bang bang detector easier, we will later see a digital implementation of it, not the analog implementation, where you pass the charge from current into uh, you have the up and down pulses that is the comes from a digital circuit right from a set of flip flops. Now, the same information can be got from the deserialized stream also right, because all we have to do is we take the let us say this is A, this is B and this is T right all of them will be deserialized like this. So, I call this let us say T 0 1 and the next one will be this will be T 1 2 sorry T 1 2 cannot be here. It can be deserialized and when you deserialize it you will have a delay and the larger the factor you deserialize by you have a delay uh, you have more and more delay and you can get up and down signals from the deserialized stream. Okay. But this will only incur more and more delay. So, that means that if you do it and the loop filter can also be implemented digitally we will see that. So, if you try to do that what happens is if you deserialize by factor of 16 you will probably have many cycles of delay at least 8 okay. in fact, if not more. So, you will uh, increase the bang bang jitter contribution. Okay. So, this n increases deserialization causes delay and increases n. Okay. So, this means that this bang bang jitter increases. Okay. So, this can actually be a significant contribution to jitter generation in a bang bang detector. Earlier I said that now in fact, bang bang detectors are uh, more popular than uh, linear phase detectors because of I mean good reasons linear phase detectors have offsets it has narrower pulses and so on whereas, bang bang phase detectors they have to produce slightly wider pulses and they do not have the systematic offset. At the same time because of the bang bang nature you will have the systematic jitter uh, which always appears. Now, if you design a loop such that uh, you use a very high quality VCO. So, its phase noise is small and you also use a small value of R and a large value of ICP. So, that the jitter contribution from them becomes negligible. Then the jitter generation in a bang bang CDR will be dominated by the bang bang jitter. Okay. So, that is also not easy to I mean or you have to make sure that that is small enough. Okay. How would you reduce the bang bang jitter? So, let us say I design this and I have some delay may be I mean I am not talking about the deserialized case, but even in the regular case at least I will have two ups and two downs and two ups and two downs right. So, I will have a certain amount of bang bang jitter. So, what will I change to reduce the bang bang jitter? Yeah. So, here if you look at this what is this part? What is that expression K V C O I C P R that is the bandwidth in a linear uh, I mean in the linear phase detector that would be the bandwidth. Okay. So, essentially in this case of course, we have a binary phase detector, but you know that this number is what is going to decide the bandwidth. So, if you have a certain bandwidth then you will have some if you have certain product of K V C O I C P R you will have a certain amount of jitter. Okay. So, <laughs> the only way to reduce the jitter is to reduce the effect redu effectively reduce the bandwidth of the CDR. Okay. This is fine. Now, this is not the exact bandwidth in the same sense as in a linear uh, CDR right. In the earlier assignment you have seen that the small signal gain of the phase detector the bang bang phase detector it is related to the amount of jitter right. You saw that is not it I mean. So, it will depend on that, but whatever that phase detector gain is that will get multiplied by ICP times R times KVCO to get the bandwidth. Okay. So, bandwidth will be proportional to this number that number may not be exactly the bandwidth in uh, radians per second. It was exactly that ICP R KVCO was the bandwidth in radians per second for a linear phase detector, okay. but uh, for the bang bang phase detector it is not, but whatever it is the bandwidth will be proportional to this. Okay. So, the only way to reduce it is it looks like you have to 
uh, either reduce KVCO or reduce ICP times R, effectively reducing the bandwidth of the CDR. Okay, so that's another trade-off that has to be uh, taken care of. Huh? Yeah, that's correct. So that is the disadvantage. Now, if you go and reduce the bandwidth of the CDR, the other contributions there uh, <coughs> they may increase. In particular, the VCO noise will not be suppressed up to a high enough frequency, right? So again, if you go by the <coughs> what we have said earlier, the transfer function from the VCO noise to the output is like that. If I reduce the bandwidth, it will be like that. Okay. So, clearly the suppression is smaller and it makes the VCO part of the jitter generation worse. So, now you have to see, finally you have to optimize the overall uh, uh, jitter generation. So, if you find that let us say VCO contribution is really small and this is dominating, maybe it is worthwhile doing that. Okay. So, for jitter generation there will be some trade off I mean between the contribution of the VCO contribution of uh, other components and the bang bang contribution. But of course, the lowering the bandwidth may be even more undesirable for a different reason this will also affect the jitter tolerance right. So, jitter tolerance uh, for the earlier case it would have been like that and for this one it is for sure lower right. So, that is a problem. But then this will worsen J tall and VCO phase noise contribution. Okay. Any questions about these things? Okay. So, we are measuring the phase at the transition sample and the it starts applying the correction sometime later that is the main problem. Okay. If, if this pulse could be generated right here, okay, I mean starting from this point then there would be I mean it will always be just alternating ups and downs that at least has to be there that we cannot help because we can only measure the uh, phase at the transitions, at every transition you will get an either up or down. The best case would be to get up, down, up, down, up, down, but that is not what happens. We will typically at least get up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down okay? and as the delay increases it gets worse and worse. What is that? I did not get this. What should I do? If I reverse the clock, uh, the rising edge becomes falling edge and vice versa. Both of them to do what? Yeah. See, uh, so, forget the exact algorithm, what we are sampling are these points x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5. So, in every data symbol we are sampling twice. So, you tell me what you would want to do to make it faster. But uh, you cannot do phase detection right then, can you? Because if A and T are the same, you cannot tell anything. If A and T are different, then you can tell there is a transition, 
and the clock edge is late. You understand? So, the suggestion is if I take only let me uh, this is one possibility and the other one is this. So, if A and uh, T are uh, different then I know that the clock is lagging the ideal position, but if A and T are the same I do not necessarily know that it could also be that there is no transition here at all right. So, I have to look at the following one also is this clear and similarly I mean B and T alone cannot be used because B and T will be the same if there is no transition or if the clock is too early ok. Because I mean certainly when there is no transition you should not be doing anything because you have no information at all right. Because if uh, when there is no transition you push it one way or the other that could things could go completely wrong. Okay. No, no we will get the edge what I am saying is when you do not get the edge you should not be making a decision on whether it is early or late because you simply do not know that is all is not it. It is only when you get an edge that you can make a decision about whether the edge is early or late right. Because when there is no transition let us say you push it up and then you have a few consecutive identical digits and then you keep pushing it up. I mean in fact, which way would you push it it is hard to tell uh, this will skew it one way or the other right. If you take only A and T it will skew it in one direction take only B and T it will skew it in the other direction ok. that uh, would not be possible. Because we have three samples separated in time A, T, B and we do some signal processing we know what it is. So, if you have to do that the earliest you can get the output with a causal system is here right you cannot get it any earlier than that, but you are actually making a decision about the phase at that point. So, there will be at least a half cycle delay and of course, because of circuit implementation there will be a little more delay and if you do deserialization and so on there will be a systematic delay which is quite long ok. Yeah, think about it we can discuss it further also, but this is some uh, phenomenon particular to bang bang phase detectors which can be uh, troublesome when you have when you either try to make uh, CDRs with large bandwidth or when you have a lot of delay because of uh, because you implement this digitally at a low frequency. There is a digital implementation of this. See, what is happening is this ICP, right? The charge from current. Uh, so, if you have ICP or basically you have ICP R plus integral of ICP by C dt, this is what is fed to the control voltage of the VCO. Now, the same thing, same operation can be done in the digital domain. Okay, you have some proportionality and instead of integration you have accumulation okay. that has many advantages because this C it tends to be large and sometimes you may want to reduce the size. But then if you want to implement those more complicated digital circuits you cannot do this at 10 gigahertz okay, or you if you even if you can do it it will be too power hungry. So, you will deserialize it to a low frequency and do that, but once you deserialize you will have the delay associated with deserialization. Okay. Is this fine? 